This is the adapted version of Bandagi Nama by Bhai Sahib Bhai Rigbir Singh. Forward. The Bandagi Nama or Communion with the Divine by Bhai Rigbir Singh contains the spiritual and devotional thoughts of the author which were given to him through meditation. Rigbir Singh was not only a poet but a thinker a philosopher and a meditator of a very high order who achieved a high stage of spiritual enlightenment whilst fulfilling all of his worldly and family duties. The author started as a layman on the spiritual path and reached the highest stages through spiritual discipline where he reflected the vision of the divine of the creator and as Gurbani says Manas de Dev de Kiyir. he went from being a normal human being to being a deity Guru Nanak laid down the three principles the three principles are one prayer also known as Ardas, to effort, also known in Gurbani and in Japji Sahib as Saram or Sharam, and three, sharing spiritual experiences with others, Jo Aap Jabe Avra Nam Jabave. Thoughts and ideals shared in this book were revealed to the author through his communication with the creator the translator and the adapter has made best efforts to maintain the integrity of the original text however it is very difficult to translate Gurbani and Punjabi into literal English meanings the quotations from Guru Granth Sahib and other spiritual scriptures also used and are of common heritage for the upliftment of us as human beings to achieve a better and higher life. The author has explained how someone can use concentration and meditation known as Simran and through various stages of development experience the creator whilst living a normal householder's life and carrying out normal course of mundane duties. The starting point for spirituality according to the author is Simran, remembrance of Vaigru and Gyan, Gurbani Vichar, divine knowledge and effort. These three lead the aspirant to understand the creator and experience him. Lastly, the author's summary is that human birth is an opportunity to meet our creator. About the author, Bairagbi Singh Beer was a highly respected family man. He was a chief engineer by occupation and he lost his mother when he was one and a half years old. At the age of four, under the inspiration and guidance of his grandmother, he began the practice of Simran. He continued this practice all through his academic life studying Sikh history side by side. He was married at the age of 14, which was common during that era. His wife died after two years and he was married again. And he remained with this companion right up to his death. He graduated from Khalsa College Amritsar and during his college days he took active part in social 
and religious activities, as well as being an avid reader and writer. He grew up to be a poet, a philosopher and a seeker of the divine. The British government banned his first book, Bir de Tir, the Jilawani Bag tragedy had a great impact on his tender mind. He was an official in the Indian railways, but Rugby Singh refused to join British government service. He came to Kolkata in 1922 and started his business. In 1940, he started Artham Science, a monthly magazine. In the same year, he also started Gurmat Prachar Society in Kolkata for the propagation of Gurbani and Kirtan, which is still going strong today. Established a Sikh public school in Dagshai in 1957. Later on, he created another trust known as Gurmat Prachar Trust for the propagations of the teachings of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. He died on the 14th of April 1974 at Dagshai, where he spent the last 17 years of his life devoting himself to the service of his creator, Simran meditation and to writing. Bhairagbi Singh wrote Bandugi Nama in Punjabi and it has provided solace and enlightenment for Sikhs for many years. It has been translated into English and is non-secular so followers of other religions can also benefit from reading it. Sikhism is one of the great world religions. The teachings of the Gurus transcend the limits of religion, caste, creed, age, income, gender and also of time and space. It is a frank and convincing record of the author's own spiritual experiences and is a practical guide for everyone. As a Sikh he lived as a householder performing his duties as prescribed by his guru but also remembering his real life's purpose. At the initial stages he questioned himself why should I try and realize truth my creator the divine. Like many others he resisted the inner voice but through meditation through Simran he morphed and was reborn in spirit. He did not share the common idea that one should not talk about one's spiritual experiences and often said, our spirituality doesn't shrink or dwindle by sharing it with others. The author wrote this book because he truly believed that the correct interpretation and practice of religion could transform a human being into an angel and the world into paradise. In particular he spoke to the youth who he felt were becoming more materialistic and more concerned with aesthetics than about spirituality and about the spiritual treasures that we have inherited from our forebearers. Chapter 1 Introduction Those who have realized the truth are kings amongst men. These earthly kings are no kings. To love anything except Vaiguru causes pain. Why glorify what is created? It is but fleeting. One alone lives forever and ever the Vaigru centered being who has realized this truth. He is like Vaigru, ever living and deathless. Guru Amradas Maru. The voice within me spoke. Realize Vaigru. Find Vaigru within you and you will attain eternal bliss. For a long time I didn't listen to this voice. At times I would reply with the words of Bhagat Danna, while starving I can't go on this spiritual journey. Again a voice from inside would speak out, 
find Vaigru, experience Vaigru, without becoming free of birth and death, there is no happiness. And without Vaigru, there is no salvation. There is no freedom from birth and death. I spoke from my heart. Why must I try to find Vaigru? Why must I make effort and sit and close my eyes and meditate? The world has so much to see and so much to do. How beautiful are worldly things. The voice inside me began to grow faint. I was happy and I pushed that voice further and further down. But eventually the voice became audible again and stronger. Find Vaigru. Find Vaigru. Not in vain has the Guru said, Not save Vaigru's worship will avail thee, Guru Arjan. Nothing apart from Vaigru's worship will save thee. Another quote, This life is being wasted. You have fallen in love with a fleeting phenomenon of the world, Guru Arjan Asa. And another quote, Nothing but God's worship will save you. The rest is worthless. Guru Arjan Gauri Sukhmani This inside spoke again. Nothing is beautiful, nothing is enchanting. It's your thoughts that make it so. The same mountains that look beautiful to one person may be treacherous to another. These are all thoughts. These are all paradigms of the mind. You say that without food you cannot do bhakti, you cannot do meditation. But are those who have food, are they satisfied? Without finding Vaigru, you cannot experience true contentment. Put faith in Vaigru. Bhakti will drive all your desires away and you will be content. Food won't quench you, your hunger and thirst for more. Only Vaigru will. Meet thy Guru and you shall find contentment. Guru Amr Das Gujri For a long time I procrastinated and put off what I knew I must do. I silenced that inner voice. But when I acted in opposition of what I knew I must do, that voice became more insistent and more persistent and grew stronger. I began to turn to my religion, the religion I was born into, the Sikh religion. Even though I was born a Sikh, I did not know much about Gurmukhi's script and the Guru Granth Sahib. I started to read the Guru Granth Sahib and whenever I failed to understand a point, I prayed and waited in faith and hope and never in vain. My meditations, I had flashes of lights and all my doubts were resolved. Many times I read books and writings which answered my questions. I felt like they were written especially for this purpose, to answer my doubts, to answer my questions. In this way, all of my doubts were vanquished. What still shocks me today is that inner voice which I defied which I resisted, which I ignored, continued to ring in my ears and has set me on the right path. In consequence now, I never ignore it. I listen to it. I continue to read spiritual texts and to consult with spiritual people. However, I'm not perfect. I still victim to being impressed by female charms and other vices. This susceptibility has stopped my spiritual progress to a certain degree. Nevertheless, my Simran has morphed me and rebirthed me in spirit. In this new life, I have no worries, 
no anxieties, no stress, no wants, no desires for anything. All there is is joy and bliss and calm and peace and poise. I live a carefree life. The greatest material joys cannot compare to what I experience on the inside. How can I ever possibly repay the debt I owe Vaigru for his grace and generosity in my quest? In life, you can't put your faith in something unless you experience something, unless you see the benefits of that thing. Many people regard experiencing Vaigru, meeting Vaigru, finding Vaigru as the same. You can't blame them for this attitude, for not having that faith and that desire. Because religious preachers who don't understand things for themselves and don't practice things themselves fail to help others and inspire others. Religion is not to blame. The proper solution for the difficulties in the world today is the correct implementation and practice of religion and enlightenment. In singing Vaigru's praises and in doing Simran, virtues flow through us. A, a strong body and strong mind result from it. We're capable of amazing things. Meditation leads to good health. You get ill less often and your mental health is far better. Disease and pain, illusion and fear are shred when Nanak the Creator dwells in our mind. Dukh param dard po nase karanhar nanak man vase Guru Arjan Gauri Meditate on Vaigru and you will eliminate disease, sorrow and your pain. Rog sog sab duk binasi japtanam murari. Guru Arjan Gauri. Through Simran, we have union with Vaigru, and through union with Vaigru, we are blessed with heavenly powers and attributes that the whole world seeks and strives to find. Isn't it worth trying to see? if all of these virtues and benefits really come from doing Simran. If we make an honest effort to find Vaigru, we will get the benefit. Guruji says, if we take one step towards him, he will take hundreds of steps towards us. If we honestly and earnestly move towards Vaigru, the subtle forces of Vaigru and creation will flock towards us and he will come and welcome us. I have recorded all my spiritual experiences in this book. They might not align completely with other saints and I claim no infallibility. My only aim is to create in my readers a desire and a craving to meet Vaigru. If you have doubts, it is important to converse with saints to get your questions answered. But it's very difficult to find real saints who really know Vaigru as Guru Nanak knew Vaigru and are in a position and have the desire to guide others. In this book, I've made an attempt to meet that need and to help as much as I can. For 25 years, I did Simran in seclusion. And I thought that was the way to do it. And I think it is the way to do it in the initial stages. My wife and even my children and friends never knew anything about my spiritual journey. I used to wake up in the middle of the night and would go to bed in the early hours of the morning. But at a certain stage in my spiritual journey, I thought it was selfish to keep all of these experiences to myself to put our experiences before humanity is to help 
humanity, to enrich humanity and to show them there's something else apart from materialism. Extend what you've gained. Let it help others. As Madame de Salle puts it, search for the truth is the noblest occupation and its publicity is a duty. Chapter 2. What is a Sikh? Literally the word Sikh means to be a student, someone who wants to learn, someone who is a seeker, someone who is trying to experience and find the divine, his creator. A Sikh grooms his body, faces temptations that are out in the world and all the laws of Maya and earns his living with honesty. He doesn't rip anybody off. He speaks the truth. He meets his domestic commitments. He helps his family. He serves his parents. And he's a good friend and citizen. But he stands unaffected and disentangled. In the course of his daily routine, he gives first number one priority to knowing himself, to understand where he came from, where he's going to go and who created him. He has full faith in his objective and so is an embodiment of positivity, optimism and faith. No attractions of the world, no temptations, no allurements, no hurdles can knock this Sikh off the path. He might suffer defeat temporarily, but very quickly he will regain composure and he will be back on the path. A Sikh has full faith in his Guru. He treats Guru Nanak like a child treats their mother. He believes that while following Guru Nanak's teachings, he can find his way through the craziness of the world and make his way back to Vaigru. He makes effort to fully understand the words of his Guru and what his Guru is trying to tell him and how he can apply that in his life. The Sikh also knows that impatience and restlessness will not get him anywhere. He is firm and unshakable and perseveres. If he falters, if he fails to follow the Guru's word, the Guru's teaching, he prays, he is humble, he is apologetic, he is reverent and then he waits patiently for a response to his prayers. He knows that God that Vaiguru is abundant, is boundless, is benevolent. He is a giver. He even keeps people who don't believe in him alive and gives them breath. So he waits and watches like a true lover. Hafiz has said, Someday you'll be at one with Vaiguru with God if you have patience enough. The Sikh knows that he is to rise from a human level to a super consciousness and there is such a disparity, such a gap, such a chasm between human characteristics and super consciousness that it's going to take a lot of time to cover that journey. Even one lifetime may not be enough. And so patience and faith are his two best friends on this spiritual journey. Messing up, failing doesn't deter the Sikh. It doesn't put him off. He knows that he is at war. He is at war with his own self, with his own lower nature, 
with his own vices, with his own weaknesses and the bad actions that might arise from these weaknesses. He hacks his way through sin and puts systems in place to try and better himself and develop. The Sikh's mind is a battlefield where he battles every day with the old Adam in him. Taking Amrit, discipline, Mariyata, reading Gurbani, Kirtan, Simran, listening to people praise Vaiguru, all of these are necessary. But the Sikh also knows that these are means to an end. They are not in themselves the goal. The central aim and aspiration of a Sikh is to see Vaiguru, to realize Vaiguru, and to be one with Vaiguru. Someone who has this goal, someone who has this focus, sooner or later will achieve it. My first love was Sikh history. I pulled through books on Sikh history. I then started to read Gurbani and fell in love with Gurbani. I read the Guru Granth Sahib Ji and found two central themes, two main clarifications around this spiritual path, two main directives around this spiritual path. The first is that there is a creator, there is a Vaiguru. He is undeniably omnipresent and exists. The second is that he is achieved through Nam. Chapter 3, Gurbani. Guru's word. The place of the Guru's word, the word of the Guru, and not his physical body, is our teacher, is our Guru, is our guide. Bani Guru, Guru Hai Bani, which Bani Amrita Sare, Guru Ram Das, not. The word is the Guru, and the Guru is the word. The word is all nectar the supremacy of the Guru's word, the mental state of the speaker of Gurbani is similar to the mental state of the speaker of someone who's really listening. The word is a magic force. The Guru's word emanated from a sublime state of mind in which ego was non-existent and Vaigru was all pervasive where there's no I, there's just Tu, there's just you. The mind of the reader and the mind of the listener rises from low level, from Adam level, to subtle and sublime levels of spirit through the word, through Gurbani, where we can experience bliss. Turki Bani I Tin Sagli Chint Matai Guru Arjan Sorat The word came from a high and it dispelled all cares. Sat Gur Ki Bani Sat Sat Karjano Gur Sikho Har Karta Aap Moho Kadai Guru Ram Das Gauri Regard the Guru's word as truth. The Creator's word ran through the Guru's lips. How to judge your spiritual state? No one can always be in a uniform spiritual state. In the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, there's instructions for different spiritual stages. Most Sikhs might find it hard to judge where they're at and what would best suit their spiritual state in order for them to grow and develop to a different level. To solve this problem, the author has developed a technique. The verses that the author could fully understand and that appealed to him, he interpreted as directions from the divine, from the creator, for his spiritual upliftment. Those were the ones that inspired him to repeat those shabads 
to repeat those verses. Some were for detachment and those appealed to him at that point. Some were for virag, for longing, and those appealed to him at a certain point. And some were for love, or naam, or devotion, or gyan. It's the same person, but as the state changes, different gurbani might stand out to them, and they might be moved by it. And that's one of the powerful methodologies behind how Gurbani works. It moves you to a state. Contradiction in Gurbani. At times you might come across a verse where it seems like the Guru might be contradicting themselves. Viewed curiously, the seeker might think in the first instance that this is a contradiction. For example, in one Shabbat, it might emphasize effort to be one with Vaigru, and in another sh Shabbat, it might say he blesses that person who he has grace on, and no one can do something by their own will. But these verses aren't contradictory, they're directions for people in different states of mind effort and God's will. When we start doing Simran, it's effortful. But as we progress spiritually, we find out that all of our efforts are God's will. His hand is present and His grace is present. At the back of every impulse, every thought, every step is God's will, is His command. As we grow in our spirituality, we realize that everything that's happened in our past, even past lives, got us to this point and got us to meditation. And it was all part of Vaigru's plan. It was all part of what needed to happen to get us to this point. How does that man get turned into an angel? It's not external. It's an ordinary mortal an ordinary human being turning into the morals, the qualities of an angel. And that happens through a change in ideology. There's merely a difference in thoughts, ideas and ideals between a saint and a fool. Patience and humble effort are essential. If we fail to grasp the Guru's word, we become defeatists. We think we haven't achieved anything, so we'll give up. But we must stay humble and patient and persevere. Spiritual work produces the best profit. The best return on investment is for spiritual work, for our Simran. The Sufi saint Urfi said, if, O oh Urfi, tears could achieve union with God, I would fain cry, hopefully, for a hundred years. Patience is a force which nothing can stop. Material and spiritual benefits. The Guru's word breathes peace for the moment as well as forever. It helps us clear through the hurdles of daily life and we get all of the benefits of meditation. It cheers us up, it invigorates us, it energizes us, it detaches us from fleeting stresses and strains of daily life and illusory pleasures, just momentary pleasures which the mind, the fickle and weak mind, runs towards. Spirituality ushers us towards Vaigru and Vaigru's realm, rendering us worthy of sublime peace, joy, contentment and spiritual experience. Mental attitude during the study of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. We must be without intention, without 
bad intention. We must have the mind of a child, a beginner's mind, a pure mind, full of faith and full of love when reading Guru Granth Sahib Ji. We must look at Guru Granth Sahib Ji the same way a student listens to his teacher with full concentration, full faith, full belief. It isn't about idol worship. It's about following the Guru's instruction. Read but a page but feel as if you are in the presence of a perfect master. Reading Guru Granth Sahib Ji in moments of extreme difficulty and distraction. When I've done that, I've felt like I've been in the presence of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Maybe this was due to my helplessness or my faith, but it was amazing. It was sweet. I've often remembered this joy as one of a happy memory, a dream. When you're dead tired, when you feel broken, when you feel helpless, sometimes our mind, our thoughts flash back to those moments of bliss that we experienced spiritually and that sublime state of mind.